today we're going to look at if the no contact rule has failed if your ex hasn't contacted you. So basically taking a situation where your ex has not contacted you during the midst of a no contact rule and looking at if that no contact rule can still be successful. And if you stick around until the end of this video, not only am I going to show you some of the biggest misconceptions that people have about the no contact rule, but I'm also going to explain to you what's going through an ex's mind if they're not contacting you. And we're also going to talk about if you should be the one reaching out to your ex first after the no contact rule. And I promise you what I'm going to say will be entirely controversial. So let's start at the beginning. What is a no contact rule? Well, if you're familiar with the way we operate, we always try to update our main program in ex-boyfriend recovery and ex-girlfriend recovery every two to four years. Times quickly change, and with those times, also the definitions of what we're learning is working entirely with the no contact rule will change as well. So initially, when we first talked about the no contact rule, we only talked about the concept of a no contact rule being this period of time where you ignore your ex and it will help make them miss you. We actually found out that that definition caused people to not make their exes miss them because they went into a no contact rule just entirely trying to make an ex miss them. The difference is you get someone who goes into the no contact rule with an idea of outgrowing an ex or moving on from an ex and that makes an ex miss you we found that's a much more effective way of defining what a no contact rule is. So essentially the way we define a no contact rule here on ex-boyfriend recovery and ex-girlfriend recovery is it's a period of time where you ignore your ex on purpose with the intent of making them miss you by outgrowing them. That's a big mouthful to define a no contact rule by. But oftentimes success within a no contact rule is determined by how often they're reaching out to you. So let's say you use a no contact rule on yours truly. If I were to reach out to you on day five, that no contact rule has been successful. But what happens if your ex doesn't reach out to you? A lot of men and women who come through our program encounter this very scenario and chalk the no contact rule up as being a failure. To further highlight this point, we actually believed before we actually did the testing that most people who get a no contact rule used on them will actually contact their exes as a result of the no contact rule. But upon polling our private Facebook support group full of thousands of men and women who are going through breakups who are using the no contact rule, we found that there's a 60% chance that your ex will not contact you during the no contact rule. But does that mean it's unsuccessful? Well, this is where we kind of have to go back to that original definition. If you're operating under the assumption that a no contact rule can only be successful if your ex reaches out to you and says, I miss you or I love you or something like that, then you're not really looking at the power of the no contact rule in general. Real quick, I want to say that if you're new to this YouTube channel or you're trying to figure out what you should be doing to get your ex back and you're trying to learn if you even have a chance in your specific circumstance, probably the smartest thing for you to do is actually stop by our website www.exboyfriendrecovery.com or take our ex recovery chances quiz that can be found at exboyfriendrecovery.com. Now if you're watching this on YouTube, taking that free quiz is super easy to do. All you have to simply do is look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on the link you see there. It will take you directly to the quiz where you can fill it out and get an easy answer on what you should be doing going forward and overall what your chances look like in your specific situation. All right, so let's get you back to the video. You see, it's our belief that no contact is not about getting your ex back. No contact is about getting yourself back. And this is why we actually don't believe having an ex reach out to you is an indicator that the no contact rule is working because the no contact rule works in two specific ways. Number one is it's helping you outgrow your ex. So it's helping you hit the reset button on your life so that you can get back to the version of yourself you were before you were so obsessive about your ex because we do know people who tend to come within our program are very obsessive towards their ex. And we often talk about this concept as striving to become ungettable. Now, the ungettable concept is something that I've talked a lot about and have even written an entire 
book about. But if you were to ask me how to define becoming ungettable, I would say it's very hard to quantify what someone who is ungettable is. In fact, this is a question that I posed to a recent success story that I was interviewing just today. We got on the phone and she was telling me the story about what she did during no contact. And she said, you know, I really strove to become ungettable. She said that maybe four or five times. And towards the end of the interview, I sit there and ask her, hey, what does ungettable mean to you? And she couldn't really quantify it either. So we kind of went back and forth and ultimately came up with one singular adjective to describe someone who is ungettable. Fortitude. Someone who has the fortitude to not quit on their life goal. Someone who has the fortitude to get back up after life knocks them back down. And the problem is a lot of people don't have a lot of fortitude before they enter into a no contact rule. So let's say that you do get into a no contact rule and you do work on becoming ungettable and work on your fortitude. After you come out of the no contact rule, if you feel like you're in a completely different place emotionally, can you honestly say the no contact rule didn't? work. And this leads us to our next really interesting insight. By doing this, by gaining fortitude, by becoming ungettable, you set yourself up in a position where you can have a leverage in talking to your ex again. That very success story that I was interviewing today talked about this exact concept. She did so much positive work on herself, going to the gym, hanging out with friends, going on dates, that by the time she ended up having a conversation again with her ex, she felt like she was in a new place emotionally. And that certainly carries over when those conversations do occur. And if you were to ask me the number one mistake I see people make during no contact rules, it's the fact that they don't do anything with their time other than obsess about their ex. And all of us are guilty of this a little bit. You know, you go through a breakup, you sit on social media, you scroll through Facebook looking and seeing what they're doing. And then of course they post a photo or like someone's picture and you hyper analyze that action and think it has something to do with you. This is not healthy behavior. Healthy behavior is using all of that anxious energy and putting it in yourself and working on yourself in a positive way. So if you wanna know if I believe the no contact rule can be successful if your ex doesn't reach out to you, I honestly do believe it can be extremely successful if you make it successful. But that doesn't really solve the problem of contacting your ex. And this leads me to the most controversial part of our program, and that's the fact that we believe you should be the one after a no contact rule to reach out to your ex first. And in order to explain this, I need to kind of reshape your paradigm around the idea of who reaches out to who first. This is more so a problem with our female clients because female clients operate correctly under the assumption that men are the ones who are supposed to reach out first. And they're kind of right. Society is kind of set up that way, at least in the United States and even the UK. But when you go through a breakup, reality works a little differently. We have found through extensive testing that who starts a conversation doesn't matter as much as the quality of that conversation and who ends the conversation. That's what makes the bigger impact on getting another conversation started and another one and another one. And it just kind of snowballs. So if you can do those two things, it won't really matter if you have to reach out first. Plus, you're the one who used the no contact rule, right? It is kind of rude if you think about it. So it makes sense that you would want to be the one to reach out first. And even if your ex gives you a hard time about, well, where were you? Why didn't you contact me? It's really easy to parade the elephant in the room in the front, address it, and quickly move on. We have found extensive results with this method for people who buy into it. So. To recap, we believe what's more important isn't who starts the conversation, but who ends the conversation. Now, speaking of ending the conversation, if you haven't already, make sure you take that X Recovery Chances quiz that I talked about in this video. It's a simple free two minute quiz designed to basically tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back. Simply look in the description below and click the link you see there. Also, if you haven't liked, commented, or subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. You have no idea how much that helps. We just hit over 60,000 subscribers, which is pretty rad if, if I'm being honest, but we're really pushing by the end of the year to hit 100,000 subscribers. So hopefully you can help us make that happen.